Hey guys, how you doing out there? This is Kelly Cook, Everything Phoenix. We are going to talk about tourism back in Arizona. But is Arizona the new Hollywood? Is Phoenix the new Hollywood? Is Hollywood going to maybe make a case to move some of its operations, the film industry in general, over to Phoenix? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. We're going to check that out and some more on this video. And we're going to jump in. There's some fun stuff too. We got some spring training stuff. We have some water issues, okay? Or some discussion about water, right? Water is always a hot topic, especially in the desert. And uh, it's going to continue to be a hot topic. So, so stick around for that. We're going to cover the latest and greatest that is coming out on the water issues for the Phoenix area, guys. And we're going to cover some Maybe some artificial intelligence at the end, too. We're going to show you some stuff here. So stick around for that as well. It's going to be a fun one, guys. And, of course, we're going to hit the market just for a little bit so you guys are informed on what the market's doing in case you're looking to buy or sell or invest in real estate. But, guys, if you could, we're going to have some FAQs, too, as well at the end if you guys are asking questions or throughout the live if you're going to ask questions. But we'd love to know where you're watching from. If you wouldn't mind putting your name and, and city state where you're watching from, if you don't mind, and don't be shy. I would greatly appreciate that. And ask away, guys. Ask away any questions that you possibly have. And then if you're really um, going to do us a solid or maybe you're just bored, hit that subscribe button really quick. That will just take about a half a second. And uh, we'd love to get our video out to more and more people who could benefit from this news about all these things that have to do with Phoenix, Arizona and the future of Phoenix, Arizona. Not just real estate, but development and resorts and everything living in Phoenix, guys. So thank you so much for joining. We're going to jump right in. I'm going to share my screen as I always do, and we'll keep this action packed as much as possible. I'm going to save that one for a little bit later. We're going to jump in here right away into the film industry, guys. That's right. Land investors form Valley Film Production Company after Arizona approves incentives. Now, this is interesting, guys. The state of Arizona is actually making a push here for um, the film industry to, you know, we're so close to Los Angeles, right? Hollywood, we're a six hour drive, depending on where you're at in the Valley. And uh, it's, a, it's a quick drive for the most part. And, uh, you know, you have some, some other different types of living in Phoenix, desert living, right? Lifestyle as opposed to LA, you have some more affordability in this area as well. In fact, the affordability for Phoenix actually, sidebar here, just dropped year over year, 13%, a little over 13%, guys. So the affordability has, has increased because it's dropped. So, hey, buying a house, owning, uh, living in Phoenix in general has just got a little cheaper, which is good overall. Okay. So let's see if we can attract some of these, um, these actors, actresses, projects, et cetera. Let's take a look at what this says. Now, Anita Verma, who uh, is the CEO, owner, or founder of Verma Land, which is like huge out, especially out in the West Valley in terms of the amount of land they have um, oversight on. It, it's crazy. Um, she is starting a film company and there she is right here. And her goal right here, which I love, by the way, is to take film production and place it here in Arizona. Okay. Um, so that is awesome and exciting all at the same time. They're talking about certain things they're trying to do um, and how their um, her, her production company, by the way, is called Camelback Productions. And they're working on a, on, um, a couple of films already looking to work on a reality TV show concept focused on real estate. So maybe yours truly will get in there. I don't know, right? But I would love to do some real estate TV as I'm kind of doing right here on YouTube, right? But if, if not, that's okay. YouTube is a phenomenal place to be able to talk real estate with you guys. So I'm grateful for that. But in any event, um, being on a real reality TV show would be hilarious, I think. Um, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, I'd love to know if you guys think I, I have what it takes to be on a reality TV show. Um, in any event, guys, there are some cool things here. Um, the long-term economic, economic benefits of the state are huge, right, for the film industry based upon them coming to Arizona. And the tax incentives are adding up, which is awesome. <laughs> okay, guys, we got to pause here. Nick, you're hilarious. Uh, future Superstar. Oh, man, I'm blushing. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Really appreciate that. Um, but let's keep rocking and rolling here, guys. So they had a launch party. They're serious. There they're, they're, is some people there. The mayor was there. They are serious about bringing part of the film industry down to Phoenix and the Arizona area. Um, what I love is this last um, paragraph right here, okay? Nicely Entertainment announced its expansion into Arizona and said it will start production on its first movie in the state this month. That's exciting, guys. 
that's exciting. Let's get some of that film industry into Arizona. I know some of the um, local education, um, higher education um, universities, et cetera, colleges have film um, there too as well. And a lot of people do it, but then they have to go to LA or wherever, maybe New York to do some of that. So it'd be kind of cool to keep that right here. Last summer, uh, Acacia Film um, also uh, built a studio, guys, production training facility in the Valley after passing of the film tax incentive bill. Their studio complex will include 14 sound stages and support offices across 624,000 square feet and 70 acres of land. Guys, it's coming. I love it. I love it. So this would be cool. Abby, what's going on? Kelly, didn't you recently, recently have a film debut with Jerry Maguire? <laughs> guys, yes, yes, that is true. And guys, it, it, I, I'm kind of partial about this one. But if you want to see if I have what it takes, which I don't know if I do. I mean, I'm I'm an amateur, clearly. But if you want to, go to the Everything Phoenix YouTube channel and look up. Uh, it, it was probably about three, four weeks ago or so. Look up Jerry Maguire, you know, my name. And we did a little spoof on trying to be what it's like now, a listing agent versus a buyer's agent. Because you guys all know what the, what the market did. It reversed trends. And now all the leverage, which once was on the seller side is on the buyer side. So now well, I played the role of, you know, um, Rod Tidwell and uh, I was the buyer's agent and Jerry Maguire was the listing agent and we had a little, little banter back and forth. So check that out guys. And like us, if you don't mind on that video, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> it was fun. It was fun to do. So uh, let us know what you think. Comment below and let us know what you think if you had a chance to watch it or comment on that video if you have a chance to watch it and let us know. If I did a poor job, please tell me. I'm I'm a big boy. I can take it. And I, that's how you get better, right? Constructive criticism and coaching. That's how you get better. So I would really appreciate that. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to jump back over here to some information that has to do with the tourism, right? We talked about it. Guys, this is big right here. Arizona hotel tax revenue expected to reach record heights in 2023. Now, this is a picture of the Renaissance Hotel, which is right next to the Arizona Cardinals Stadium in Westgate out in Glendale, um, which was jam-packed for the Super Bowl, of course, because you can walk right to the stadium easily, which is awesome. Um, but check it out. Here we go. The state of Arizona and local communities and municipalities are expected to collect more tax revenue from hotels in 2023 than in any previous year. That's huge. That's really good for our state and for the tourism hotel industry. I should say more specifically, they are expected to generate more than $875 million. That is a ginormous number, right? Very, very big, which is great. And then, of course, you get taxes off of that and all kinds of stuff that, that benefits the state as well. Check this out, though. In 2023, Arizona is projected to have the sixth highest hotel occupancy in the country behind Hawaii, California, Alaska. Alaska. They must not have very many hotels, right? Florida and Washington, D.C. Sorry, Alaska. No knock on you. I want to go. I've never been. And it's beautiful. Um, I just got to imagine that, you know, the, the amount of people going to um, these other states are probably a little more. Um, but I, I will be there, Alaska. So don't you worry. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. All right. Um, and then here we go. The, uh, they also said it's a good time to be a, um, to work in the hotel industry as well, because the, um, the, the pay has gone up. Uh, hotel employment is, you know, overall is down compared to the rest of the country. It's at 11.7%, which seems high compared to the state's, uh, unemployment rate, which is below 4%. It is. Uh, however, um, it's still lower than it was and it's projected to have the ninth highest hotel employment in the country this year. Okay. So even at 11.7%, it's a very good number. All right. Now with the hotels and piggybacking on that, we have this article about the Cactus League spring training guys. For those who don't know, half of major league baseball teams actually come down to Phoenix and they play in the Cactus League here. The other half go to um, Florida and they play in the Grapefruit League. Okay. So you have half and half split up playing spring training ball between, you know, end of February through um, about the end of March or so. So it is a phenomenal time. It's going to really help our economy. It does every single year. That's the Cubs' newer stadium. Um, they're down here. And uh, we have 15 Major League Baseball teams that play in 10 parks across Maricopa County, which is pretty much all the Phoenix area, right? It's set to begin, as it always does here, uh, in 2023 on Friday coming up here. And we'll run through March 28th. Now, what's cool, a couple things here. Um, talks about the roots and what what it what it does, but it's an economic impact of 363 million, okay, which is fantastic. Um, and what they're talking about is there's a couple um, couple rules changes and hotels. So let's go with the tourism. Here we go. 
Hotels expected to be full. The Valley's hotel industry is coming off a major win earlier this month with the Super Bowl and, of course, the PGA Waste Management Open. And it's going to continue and just rock and roll um, through um, the Cactus League spring training. They expect to have more than 90% occupancy during the month of March, which is, guys, it's huge. So if you're a hotel operator, if you are somebody who benefits from tax revenue, which we kind of all do as people who live in Arizona, and of course, maybe if you are an Airbnb or VRBO owner, this will help as well. Because we all saw the report that VRBOs and Airbnbs were down for the Super Bowl weekend because of a little too much saturation. Um, but hopefully some of those will get booked up now. I have a couple of them myself, and I have noticed that for whatever the reason, the uh, the occupancy has increased the past week or so on those properties. So that's good. That's really, really good. Um, new rules, too, as well. This I thought was kind of cool, you know, if you're a baseball fan, right? They are actually going to uh, be implementing the the, um, the two new rules, which are bigger bases. Where are they at right here? Bigger bases and a pitch clock. So if you think baseball is too slow because you like a, you like sports that are a little more fast uh, paced, this is going to help. You're going to like baseball more because they have a pitch clock now and the pitcher can't take forever to throw a ball on the mound, right? This is good stuff. All right. Moving on. Okay. The hotel industry is back. It's going to be um, great. It's, it's pre-COVID. Um, you know, uh, revenue numbers, and, and, and it's going to be awesome for our state and our um, employment, okay? Now, this is the, the plant for Nestle, right? Now, this is cool. Now, this is, this is water. Now, we're going to jump into water, guys. Now, stay with me here because there's two things about water we're going to cover here today, okay? This is interesting because, as you know, or maybe you don't, but let's talk about it for a second. Arizona is known as the Silicon Valley of the Southwest, right? specifically Chandler, Arizona, but now we had TSMC going to North Phoenix. And so Phoenix in general is going to be known as the Silicon Valley of the Southwest. Chips take a lot of water, a ton of water. Now, most of it is recycled, which is great. So this is a little nuance that's going to be interesting because this is a new plant that's coming out in the West Valley that Nestle, you guys know Nestle, right? Um, this is a coffee creamer plant. Guys, check this out. Look at this thing. This huge plant for just making coffee creamer, that's how big the coffee creamer industry is. Crazy, right? You, you wouldn't think that, but it's insane. It's 630,000 square feet, right? For coffee creamer. I mean, I love coffee creamer. Don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong. So I get it. I'm, I'm part of the people that support <laughs> the company Nestle, right? Um, but here we go. It takes water. Now, what they're proposing is a change in the law in terms of how this works. So what they're saying is that this, that first of all, this investment is $775 million. It's going to bring 350 new jobs to Glendale, which is awesome, right? More jobs coming, more plants coming, more revenue for the state coming. This is good stuff, okay? Now, what's the deal with the water, okay? Let's get down here and go over it. We need to find a solution, all right? So what they're saying here is that... Um, with the water that they're going to use, which is quite a bit. In fact, I think it says right here, right? Last year, Nestle had estimated its annual water use for its new plant would range between 280 million to 547 million gallons of water. Okay. That's the average of about, you know, up to maybe 5,000 homes in Arizona. Okay. That usage. Now, that all being said, what they want to do is have the ability to reuse and recycle, reclaim their water they're going to use and their wastewater without having to put it back into the city system or a private company system like EPCOR, okay? So if I share my screen here, I'm going to show you guys um, a little more of the article, all right? So we need to find a solution. Right here, you can see that. Uh, EPCOR is a private company that's actually, you know, um, a company in Arizona that, that provides water services um, and wastewater treatment, et cetera, et cetera, through parts of, of Phoenix in Arizona here, okay? But what they want to do is they're hoping to change the long-established Arizona water law so it can conserve and recycle its own groundwater without additional costs, a process that is not allowed by existing laws or permits. So they want to, without taking wastewater and putting it into the system that, that provides it, the city. Like I don't know how it is where you guys are at, guys, right? But in Arizona and Phoenix, most of the municipalities provide the sewage and water for the houses of that suburb, let's say, right? Well, um, they don't want to do that. They want to be able to do it themselves because they will not have to pay as many fees and they have the ability to and the infrastructure to invest to create it themselves. Interesting, right? Um, so over here, the new uh, proposed solution, the new bill would allow an industrial user like Nestle to treat and store wastewater underneath its facility so it can reuse the water for free, um, for free, no extra charge, right? 
through water credits rather than existing the existing option of placing the water back into the public system that's managed by utilities and having to pay to draw the water back out. Okay, so um, again, what's Arizona doing right now? Arizona is going big on incentives, maybe changing some laws um, and things of that nature to attract the top level industry because because for so many years, for decades, Arizona didn't have a lot of corporate jobs, a lot of corporations. I mean, I, I think back in 2005 when I started in real estate, at that time, I want to say the entire state of Arizona only had three, if I remember correctly, three at the time, Fortune 500 companies located in the entire state, right? That's not much where I think New York City had like 47 alone, right? Something like that. So um, they, they really made a big push and it's working over the past decade or so. So this is more of that. So they go in to talk about, you know, what they could do. And of course, you know, they're saying this is an issue that cannot wait or that can wait, excuse me. Some of the people are saying that, the, uh, the people who are opposing this, but again, you know, Nestle, as they develop this plant want to change it now to be able to obviously save some money and in their opinion save water so um you know you see both sides of it to an extent but there's going to be a um um a debate about that now i want to show you this too guys this is interesting glossary terms because we talk about water which is important this conversation is not going away for arizona for quite some time and again you'll see in the next article we talk about that there's there appears to be at this point at least plenty of water for plenty of time um, however, trying to get the water isn't necessarily because there isn't any, it's because of politics, because of contractual, you know, rights and laws and who owns it and all that fun stuff, right? So it's pretty complicated actually. But glossary of terms, acre foot, the amount of water to cover one acre of land to the depth of one foot or approximately over 325,000 gallons of water. On average that three Arizona household uses about one acre foot of water annually. So Three Arizona households use one acre foot annually. Interesting, right? Aquifer, we kind of know what that is. Underground water storage and uh, long-term storage credits. Okay, the acre foot's the one that most people don't know about. Okay, I want to make sure we cover that. Now, this was the hot topic. Rio Verde water, Rio Verde foothills specifically, not Rio Verde proper. Okay, there's a difference. But Rio Verde foothills, um, they have a water proposal. It is now solidified. And guess what? The city of Scottsdale is back in it. I know you guys probably assumed that would happen. You were right. And City of Scottsdale has capitulated and has agreed to deliver water to Rio Verde Foothills for the next two years. Okay. And, and it's interesting. They, they, they unanimously agreed at this point to give them um, two more years to figure this out. Now, hopefully this time, Rio Verde won't wait until the deadline to try to figure something out. Everybody panics. Right. Um, but they have two more years to figure this out and get something permanently in place, whether it's their own district, water district, or, you know, hiring a, a company like Epcor to permanently solve the issue. But there's, there's people who, you know, agree and disagree on both sides. So guys, stay with me here. Okay. Stay with me because it's going to get more exciting. I promise. But this is interesting stuff. Some people really geek out on this stuff and I kind of do too, because as real estate agents, we should know these things. We should be able to advise clients when looking to uh, help them purchase or sell a property in a certain part of area that might be affected by future job growth or lack thereof, future water or lack thereof, and all of these things, guys. So that's why we cover these things. So you're informed so that if you, you know, don't happen to call a Cook and Associates Real Estate Advisor and you call someone else, you'll still know, right? That's the whole idea. But hopefully you call us because we can provide more stuff than just this information. Okay, here we go, guys. The East Valley City, Scottsdale. Uh, deal was contingent on receiving 600 acre feet of raw water from a third party in which the city would supply 126 acre feet of water at the Pima Road filling station each year. Okay. Uh, and then it goes to the cost now, but Maricopa County isn't quite satisfied with this solution. Why? Because they're the ones who actually provide the actual hauling of the water up to the Rio Verde foothills for those who don't have you know, wells, right? You haul water, you put it in a container and bada boom, bada bing. So uh, Maricopa County would contract the water haulers. There you go. And so here we go. Scottsdale's on the hook. Rio Verde has water for two years for sure. And so now at this point, you know, we're just going to wait and see what happens for a permanent water solution. But I think that Rio Verde is serious now. I don't think they took city of Scottsdale serious last time. And so now with this new deal, I think we're going to have a long-term permanent solution done over the next two years. All right, Hector, what's going on, Hector? What is the difference of Rio Verde proper and Rio Verde Foothills? Good question, guys. 
Now, if I had a map, let me see if I can find you a map here, guys. Da, 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 da. I do have a map I, I can pull up. But basically, um, let's do that real quick. How about that? Let me just share this the screen with you. Now, let's go to Google. And let's go. And I can show you guys what it is. Rio Verde, Arizona. How about that? There we go. Pull up old Google. And if you guys bear with me, we're going to cover this real fast because some of you may want to know where this is. Now, let me zoom out. I like to zoom out first so you get the idea of where you stand, and then we'll zoom into it, okay? But if you zoom out, <clears throat> here we go. You can see there's downtown Phoenix right here, right? You got Sky Harbor Airport right here, and you see Scottsdale, this whole long, skinny suburb, and it goes a little wider out here. Rio Verde sits out here. It's a cool little community, actually, guys. The only downside is there's not a lot of amenities. So I have a whole video on Real Verde that you can check out on the Everything Phoenix channel. Just go there, type in Real Verde, and boom, you can get all the details there. However, since we're on it right now, this is the proper Real Verde right through here. Okay, and then you have Trilogy, which is now a the big development right here um, that came in and and Toll Brothers, amongst I think Shea Homes and a couple other ones, actually came in here and built homes all along. Matter of fact, let me go satellite the um, the old Verde River, or I should say. Um, uh, Vista Verde Golf Course, which now is now Trilogy, okay? And they have their own water deal they have here. And then Real Verde Proper has their own water supply. So they're good, they're good. Real Verde Foothills, all this land right here, okay? So that's what it is right there, guys. You can see my cursor, hopefully, you know, right in here. Boom, 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 all that, right? So that's Real Verde Foothills. And a lot of these homes are either only on wells or hauled water and so this is this was the problem with having a, a a bad water supply and then some of the wells that some of these homes are on over the last decade or so dried up right not every well lasts forever most of them last a long time let's be clear because you do your you do your due diligence prior to drilling but um yeah that's the deal guys so good question hector um all right we got one more question here let's hit it real quick abby what's up does the two years start in 2023 and end in 2025 or does it not start until 2024 and would end in 2026? You know, that's a good question. And I, I like to pretend I know everything, <laughs> but I don't, right? So let's see here. I don't think it's addressed it in this article. I'm going to assume it's going to be retroactive, right? Or, oh, here we go. Ba -ba. Um, so January 1st, I'm going to assume it's going to be retroactive. I'm going to say it's going to end 2025 is my guess, right? But right now we're at February 23rd. So this article was written 20 in uh, uh, yesterday. So the reality is, is we're off by maybe a month and a half. That's it. But 2025 to be safe is what you should advise all your clients. And then what you should do before you even probably open your mouth, honestly, is go do a little more research and find out what that deadline is. Because that's a fantastic question, Abby. And maybe I'll get that in the next uh, YouTube Live. I'll uh, let you guys know what I find out. How about that? So we have a dead, um, uh, a true answer, right? Okay. Now, some more fun articles to cover and a little market update, guys. So stick with me here. This is going to be some fun stuff here. Um, it's going to get more fun than just this one, but this is cool information, right? The new lithium ion battery recycling plant plan for Pinal County down by Casa Grande. Guys, do, do you know? Take a wild guess. And if you want to put it in the comment, I would love to hear it, but you don't have to. But how many batteries, car batteries alone, do you think this company right here, and I'll give you the name, Ecobat, recycled last year alone? Let's, uh, let's just cut to the chase. You ready? I'm sorry, 2021. 70 million car batteries. Guys, think about how much waste that would be if we didn't have car battery recycled. Car recycle. Holy cow. Car battery recycle companies. There you go. Right? That is a lot of waste, right? So it's a good thing they are doing something about all that stuff. But it's one of the largest battery recyclers globally, okay? And it's planned to locate, based out of Dallas, to Casa Gran, which is awesome. We're down here south of Phoenix, the Phoenix area. They have facilities in Germany and in the UK, and they are looking to continue to expand. They're going to spend um, spend about nine point six million dollars on a current factory. They may be uh, adding more development. We'll see, but they have not disclosed that yet. So kind of cool. So we got that going on, and um, the cost of ground is blowing up, guys. A lot of a lot of companies going down there because a lot of land. All right, let's pivot now to residential real estate. Cash is still king in the housing market. It could become even more important. Now, this is more of a national um, you know, article. Um, it applies all across the country, guys. But the reality is, is we're in residential real estate. So this is important, right? This is very important. Um, here we go. Increasingly, 
if you want to buy, oh, Jordan, I see you. I see you, Jordan. 10,000. You weren't even close. <laughs> right? There's a lot of electric batteries out there. Man, who would have thought? Okay. Um, increasingly, here we go. Um, housing market cash is king. We all kind of know that, right? But why they write an article about it? Well, here's some stats. Nationwide, all cash purchases account for 36.1% of all total home sales in 2022. That is crazy. That's the highest rate since 2013. Why? Well, what was happening in 2013? Rates weren't as high as they are now, but they were not 3%. They were higher, right? So um, that's why you start seeing cash come off the sidelines and people start using it. Um, in 2011, 2012, coming out of the Great Recession, cash sales were, cash sales, excuse me, were about 38.5%. Investors, right, jumping in and, uh, and, and buying stuff. Okay, so um, they're not all investors, but a lot of them are. Cash is king. You can see right here, the top markets for cash sales are located in the Sun Belt in states like Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, and Arizona. Okay, this is interesting. Out of the top 10 metro areas for cash sales as a percentage of all sales in 2022, six of the 10 were in Georgia. Interesting, right? In Augusta, 72.1%. Augusta, that's where obviously you have um, the Masters Tournament, but um, a lot of these small towns in Georgia, a lot of people are moving to Georgia. Um, you know, I don't know why, because this is a show about Arizona real estate. So don't get too curious about Georgia. You don't want to go there. Stay in Arizona okay? or come to Arizona. Right. Um, but, you know, hey, look, Flint, Michigan also was in the top five. So, look, maybe you don't want to go to Flint, Michigan either. Right. So just come down here to Arizona. You'll be just fine. We'll take good care of you. All right. The price picture and it gives a whole bunch of stuff about other things going on with the housing market. And then right here, this is interesting. You know where this data comes from. Who knows? But the top metros for projected home sales growth in 2023. Here are the top six, Kansas City, Greensboro, Winston, Winston, Salem, San Antonio, Texas, Memphis, and Worcester, Massachusetts, guys. Interesting, right? All right. Now, here we go. Have you guys heard of ChatGPT, a little artificial intelligence? Well, this article came up. This AI is going big, right? And this is cool. This is interesting, right? I interviewed for a chat G I interviewed Chat GPT, excuse me, for a job. Employers should take note of his performance. <laughs> this is crazy, right? So last week I chatted, um, I chatted with what sounded like a promising job candidate for a hypothetical role. Okay. And they got on chat GPT to help them with the interview process. So some of you guys, I'm gonna back up here for a second, are wondering what in the world is chat GPT? Well, guys, chat GPT is um artificial intelligence that is taking the world by storm because for whatever reason it caught wind and it went viral, right? There are other AI out there, but this one, it's still free. If you can get a login, um, is huge, okay? I'm going to demonstrate for you just one thing really quick, and um, I'm going to share my screen because this is interesting, right? So I'm going to ask somebody who's listening right now to give me something in the comments. What would you want me to type in? What do you want chat GPT to write for you? And it can do just about anything. It can do tonality. You want Nicolas Cage? voice talking about i don't know the weather report today let me know chat gpt could probably do it who's going to put some in the the uh the chat i'm waiting for someone to type something in now while i'm waiting for that um i'm gonna go back to the article okay because now you know what chat gpt is at least the basics of it but the article was quite interesting because <laughs> he decided to interview it for a hypothetical job after hearing some of the employment law attorneys that that uh the use of artificial intelligence and human resources is a potential trouble spot for employers that they should be aware of, okay? Um, it's basically wordsmithing is something, right? Um, all right, here we go, here we go. Nick came through for me. Write a script for an episode of <laughs> of Real Housewives of Scottsdale starring Kelly Cook and his <laughs> Well, I should not have put this out there. All right, here we go. We're gonna do it. Ready? Watch this, guys. Let's see what it does. This might be too specific, so Nick may have messed this up and I broke chat GPT. I don't know, but we'll see. Here we go. Um, write. Hold on, here we go. Write a script um, for an episode of Real <laughs> Housewives of Scottsdale, starring Kelly Cook and what it does. You guys ready? You watching this? Might be too complicated, Nick. You might have broke chat GBT. Did you break it, Nick? Shame on you. All right. You might have broke it, Nick. 
Let's see. Hold on, hold on. All right, Abby wrote one here. Please write a 300 word blog, right? A 300 word blog, okay? Post about, oh, here we go. Everything Phoenix by Kelly Cook in a funny tone. You guys are watching this? It's pretty cool, right? Look how fast it's writing this 300 word blog. You could go 500 word blog. You could do whatever you want. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows in Phoenix. Cook also covers some of the city's dark moments, like when a man tried to rob a bank with a cucumber. <laughs> yes, really. And let's not forget about the time a herd of cows escaped and caused chaos on the freeway. If there's one thing you can count on in Phoenix, is that there's never a dull moment. I mean, this is this is so good, guys. Look at that. There's your blog. This is what artificial intelligence, guys, is doing. This is crazy. So thank you. I'll give a shout out to Abby on that one, right? She made a comment here, and uh, we wrote it. So, guys, there you go. Um, so you can do a lot of things with this. Um, it's pretty crazy, and it's well written. Now, it will take you about 90% of the way there, right? You may have to, you should read through it, make sure it's 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 hitting the right things and not going off the rails, but it usually doesn't, guys. I mean, it really, really writes a good thing. So this guy, going back over here, is talking about, you can use chat GPT. Let's say if you're in a Zoom interview with an employer, you could, uh, and they, or maybe you have the questions ahead of time. They give you, right? Hey, here's the questions we're gonna ask you. Let's see what you think, that kind of thing. You can uh, type up chat GPT or AI and you know get some help on how you may answer the questions. Interesting, right? So number one, the art of the interview will become even more critical. The sacrifices of speed in the AI era Number three, these lines are only going to get blurrier in the years to come, so employers need to be prepared, and so on and so forth. So um, pretty crazy, right? So if you are a hiring manager out there, be aware that the person you're talking to might be using AI, and therefore, they're not really themselves. Just just saying, just saying. I'm sure no one that watches this would ever do that, right? Because people watch this show are legit. All right, here we go. Last but not least, guys, or close to last but not least. Three Arizona restaurants among Yelp's top 100 in the U.S. for 2023. Now, we're going to skip to the bottom of this and go really fast because some of you guys are foodies, right? So you want to know this. But two of them are in Tucson, and this we're not in Tucson. This is everything Phoenix, not everything Tucson. So we're going to skip right to number three at the bottom, okay, which is number 57, according to Yelp, and it's Cochina Madrigal in Phoenix, right? And last year it was ranked number one. So how it went for number one in 57, I have no idea. They don't say. But obviously, it is a Hispanic um, flair, right? It includes tacos, spice shrimp, coconut slaw, mango, avocado crema, as well as crispy salmon tacos, beef tenderloin marinated with pomegranate. Oh, my goodness. Holy cow. So good, right? Um, and then if you want to know where it is, I got you covered. Hector, no. Tucson, no. All right. Here we go. There it is, guys. Right here. You can see my cursor. Make it big here if I can, right? So it's on the on basically the, the cross streets of 16th Street and Broadway. So you're talking South Phoenix, south of Sky Harbor Airport right here, south of downtown Phoenix right here. And uh, as we zoom in, you can see there it is. Um, so if you want some good stuff, go check out Cochina Madrigal. Did I say that right? I hope that I did. I don't know. My uh, my accent isn't always the best. All right, let's move over to real estate. We're going to wrap this thing up. Here we go. Listing success rate. A couple things. You can see the graph here, okay, from the Cromford Report. And, and, and you guys know how we do this, right? The banner I'm going to put on here right now. You guys know what the Cromford Report CMI is, right? 90 to uh, 110 is balanced market. Below 90 is a buyer's market. Above 110 is a seller's market, all right? You guys got the deal. The, you guys got that, you know, the drill. Um, listing success rate. The positive signals, as of yesterday, continue to grow despite the gloomy trend in mortgage interest rates, guys. So they're not ignoring the fact that interest rates are not doing great right now. With each passing week, fewer listings are getting canceled, fewer are expiring, and more are going under contract. We can see this clearly from the listing success rate chart. Check that out. Hope you guys got that, okay? So you can see a little tick right here. If you can see that on my screen right here, it's just going down a little bit over the past week. See this a little bit. So is that a trend? We don't know yet because it could bounce right back up and, and yo-yo a little bit here, right? So um, something to be aware of. Now, first, let's make the obvious point. It says here that there's always a disconnect in January due to the large number of listings that expire on December 31st. And that's why it's so low typically. And then it goes, it goes, you know, obviously up. We need to ignore the drop and the rise uh, one month later and instead focus on the overall trend, right? That's the trend, which is not uncommon. This is what it is typically every year 
when you're talking about listing success rate when it comes to January through May approximately, right? Okay, average list price per square foot. Okay, this is a short-term picture on pricing is getting more positive for sellers with each passing day. Actual sales price, you can see it right here in the red, is going up a little bit, right? You know, this trend is your friend and it's going up. It's, it's, it's trying to get naughty right here, okay? It's going down a little bit, but it's going up as an overall trend. So we'll see what happens. Guys, the next week to three weeks, especially, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with the market in Phoenix because we have more demand right now. And it's interesting to see what will happen. Now, I wanna leave you with one more thing here, okay? And this is important. I'm, I'm doing a video about this as well, separately, because I think it's that important. I know not everyone will see the live because it goes out differently in the algorithm through YouTube. But this is something that if you're thinking about buying, you need to be aware of. And I would not be doing my job as a YouTuber if I didn't make you aware of this because you're watching a real estate show. And that is loan level pricing adjustments, okay? LLPAs. What is that? Well, in a nutshell, every lender that gives you a loan, if you're getting financing when you go to buy a house, is going to have some sort of adjustment on the rate they offer you based on your financial structure, your finances that you have, your debt to income ratio, your FICO score, et cetera, and the type of property you're buying. You will get the best, the best rate right now if you're above a 740 on FICO score. You'll get the best rate if you're DTI, you qualify for, say, a conventional loan, and you're under 49% debt to income on your ratio there, right? Okay. So you'll get those great things right now. But come April 15th, any loan that doesn't close before April 15th will be subject to loan level pricing adjustments that Fannie and Freddie just came out with, which are going to make the person, let's say, who's looking to maybe leverage um, and buy more investment properties or a second home even, or just someone who doesn't take care of their FICO score or their debt, let's say, it's going to make that a little more challenging to buy a home. For example... Now, the, the creme de la creme FICO score is 740 and up. You get the best rate from a FICO score standpoint. Now, it's going to 780. So if you're below 780, you no longer will be giving the best rate out there possible from a FICO score standpoint only. That makes sense. Okay. And then from there, it'll go down in 20 point increments, 760, 760 to 740, 740, 720. And where you fall on that line will determine um, the interest rate that you'll get offered to you by the lender. Okay. So it's important that if you don't want to mess with that, because maybe your FICO score is not as good right now, you may want to think about possibly trying to close in that loan prior to April 15th, which means you probably need to be under contract by around March 15th on average, because the escrow period is going to be about 30 days on average, right? So a little tidbit there, obviously, um, oh, not obviously, but then your debt to income ratio is going to go from 49% where it is right now down to 40%. So can you still get a loan if you're above 40%? Yes, you can on a conventional. That goes up to 49% debt to income ratio, okay? However, if you're above 40%, you now will not be offered the best rate possible out there if you're above 40%. If you're below 40%, you're still good from that standpoint. So some little things here, and by the way, if you are buying an investment property or second home or a condo, you now have additional adjustments that will you'll take a hit on the interest rate with. So guys, these are things that are coming down the pike that you need to be aware of and working with a, a, an advisor who keeps your finger on the pulse here like we do at Cooking Associates, important, just as important now more than ever. So give us a call, 480-660-5974 with any questions you have. And you can always email us at info at cookingassociatesaz.com and we will definitely get you hooked up with somebody on our team who's more than competent, capable to help you navigate all these waters and all these changes that are coming and hopefully they don't last very long. Hopefully the government or whoever you know says, "Hey, that's 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 stymieing the, the the housing market a little bit." So let's let's remove those, right? But we'll see. We don't know. All we know there is that they're coming April fifteenth, unless for some reason they get turned they get they get turned down because maybe the lobbying of the NAR is too strong, or who knows what will happen, right? But we'll see. So stay tuned, and you'll be fully informed. All right, T. One more question here, guys, and we'll go. T. Thanks for uh, joining. Here we go. Do you think this will lower buyer demand with these changes? I do. I do. So I think, you know, uh, for an example, I think if the rates, let's say the rates right now, because here's the deal, guys. When rates were at about, let's be clear about this. When rates were at about six and a half, six and a quarter. Okay. They stuck there for, I don't know how long it was, about a month or two, right? When that happens, people get conditioned to where they currently are. Now, if it's at 6.5 or seven or five and a half, it, it doesn't really matter necessarily. I mean, it does, but people get conditioned to where they are. 
So um, people were starting to buy homes in Phoenix. We saw that, right? It, w- it wasn't that big of a hindrance, even though they were at the six, you know, six and a quarter. And then they kind of went down a little bit. And that was good news. Now that people jumped in even further. So I think if you're at six and a quarter, I think there's going to be, you know, based on these overlays, it's going to be a cost to, the, to this, um, these rates. So let's say normally right now you'd be at six and a, six and a half. Well, with these overlays, maybe that same bar would be at six and a quarter, maybe six and three eighths. I don't know. Um, or excuse me. Um, they would be higher, sorry, six and five eighths or six and three quarters, which might keep them from purchasing. I don't know. Hopefully in most people, in most people's cases, they'll consult somebody, do a long-term math equation with that their advisor, whoever it may be, a real estate agent, lender, whomever, and figure out if this home, home ownership still works for them. Because I think in most cases it will and it should because owning real estate is definitely a long-term play, guys. And if you have that in mind, then that's the most important thing you could possibly do for yourself. Get in the game own a property, and then you can multiply it if you want to over time. But over time, a beautiful thing happens of, you know, rates will go down eventually. You can refinance, um, you pay down your your principal balance, and you create that spread so that when you go to sell, you can make some money, not just obviously pay 100% interest, which is what you do when you rent, right? So anyways, guys, let us know if you have any questions. We have, I appreciate everyone watching here today. Uh, like us, subscribe, and we'll see you next Thursday at 4 o'clock. Take care.